name is Cheryl Erickson and I'm the Indigenous Focused ECE instructor with Louis Riel Vocational College. Today we will be reviewing um, observing children in uh, our course Understanding Children Through Observation. Uh, chapter one is about um, why we observe children. But before we get started, just a reminder to read chapter one of your textbook as this video is not a replacement for your chapter reading. So why do we observe children uh, in early learning environments? And as ECE professionals, uh, we do this on a regular basis for many different reasons. Um, our goal is always to provide uh, the best type of program um, for the children to ensure that they're learning and growing and developing to ensure that we're meeting their needs. And so to find out information about how children are reacting or responding to our environment, we conduct observations. And so we learn information uh, from children by observing them. I think naturally uh, people do uh, tend to watch other people and we do that in order to uh, f find out about their likes, their dislikes, um, just to find out as much information as we can. So it's interesting also for us uh, to want to watch children in their natural environment. It's interesting to see uh, what types of play um, and what types of relationships children are developing um, from interacting in their own environment. So, it helps us to learn where children are developmentally uh, and it helps us to become more familiar uh, with the children and where they are in that learning uh, process. One of the most important aspects of observing children is um, observing them within that natural environment. So not something preset um, with specific outcomes. We want to base our, our observations on empirical evidence. Uh, we want it to be natural, realistic, uh, just children playing and us as ECEs sitting back and watching the results from um, those interactions and that play. And so that helps us gain some knowledge about where children are developmentally. It helps us determine what types of um, interests they have and the results from that will help us better program uh, for the children and it helps us learn about the actual environment and maybe there are challenges or things that are happening with the environment setup that we can change um, that will be beneficial to the children. So the goal of observations is to meet the, not only the needs of the children but it's to meet the needs of the family. And again, I have to stress that it's really important to focus your observations on natural, on the natural uh, play environment and uh, really looking back at the types of information you're documenting because it should be uh, realistic, it should be em empirical, it should be uh, reliable facts. Um, there are many different types of documents that we see um, through the province of Manitoba, the National Association for Education of Young Children, and through different types of provinces in Canada, there are um, developmental frameworks that are out there that kind of define why it is purposeful for us to observe children. And so we want to ensure that we are, you know, doing our observations, we are doing our research uh, in our day-to-day um, interactions with children in the environment uh, to, to find out if there's um, patterns of behavior, to find out if there's challenges, delays. Um, it helps us to make predictions about uh, future behavior um, and patterns as well. So uh, one of the documentations that I share with U.S. students and, and see me um, after class is the tool that the Manitoba Early Learning and Child Care uh, Program uses for documenting. And so you always see uh, when you're observing, you should look at what's happening before, um, the event that's occurring, and then what happens next. And do that on a, um, uh, a continual cycle. It should be something that you're doing uh, day to day for an extended period of time because that helps you determine what types of patterns uh, are occurring and from that document it often is 
um, a good tool to determine um, what's causing that behavior and that's what you want to do uh, if it is a behavior problem. So just uh, when we're looking at observing children, um, the tool that I just discussed, the Manitoba Early Learning and Child Care tool, um, has specific parameters when you're using it. And so, you know, again, that observation should be natural. You should, be know, you should have specific things you're looking for. Know how to record uh, information. Um, you should have many samples of observations and you know specifically uh, with any type of observation whether it's a behavior uh, if you're looking at something within the environment if you're looking at development of a child uh, you should have um, many different samples you can't just observe a child once and come to a conclusion you should see uh, children interacting in their environment uh, over you know um, a few weeks at different times throughout the day and again it in their natural uh, environment you should be reflecting as well and throughout this course we talk a lot about reflection and how that helps us um, to uh, plan for the future it helps us to look at how we could do things differently how we can meet uh, the needs of the children uh, in a, in a a more positive way or in a, in a better way. So we're going to look at that observation. We're going to analyze it. We're going to see what kinds of conclusions we can come from come, that can be uh, come out of that observation that will benefit uh, all the children in the program. And uh, hopefully, when you're doing that observation, when you come to the end, it's going to answer those questions that you've had. Uh, which initially sparked you to want to do that uh, observation. So that critique of the observation is going to be really important and that's something that you should share with your coworkers as well because they may see a different side of, of that observation as well or may pick up something within that observation that you're not, uh, you're not maybe seeing. So it is a really, uh, again, an important tool um, to use. Um, just in reviewing um, this uh, uh, chapter one, um, there is some different documents that I'm going to share with you. We are going to uh, post them uh, on this video. And I want you just to review these, uh, these documents because they are really uh, important documents and kind of set the tone of why um, it is important in our practice as these ECEs to um, observe children. So again, it's part of, um, as professionals, um, our ethics, our principles, our guidelines all want to support uh, positive interactions within that early learning environment. We want to do uh, our best to meet the needs of all children in care. And within that, we have the framework that sets the tone for that. And as responsible ECEs, we want to ensure that we are doing our due diligence in caring for the children. So that does uh, conclude chapter one of understanding uh, children through observation. If you do have any questions regarding um, the documents for review, as well as uh, questions regarding the chapter, uh, please see your instructor as well as see me to pick up the uh, observation tool that I discussed earlier in this chapter and uh, just check in to ensure you haven't missed any assignments. Mm -hmm.